right, I'm ready to paint my lioness. I've got my set of oil paints and some turpentine and I'm going to block in roughly the shapes that I see with a fairly biggish brush and I'm going to start with this bit of sky which is actually a very very pale blue Starting with some white and a tiny bit of ultramarine and a lot of turps so it will dry very quickly. Proof of the pudding. And I don't like that at all. So I can alter it. But let's just have a quick one up there, and a patch up there. More ultramarine. That's better. I still want it very pale. Lots and lots of turps. And it will dry very quickly. I'm cross hatching. That's putting the paint on this way and that way so that I don't get harsh lines where my paintbrush has been. I don't want to see my brush strokes when I've finished. Yes. Right, I'm going to add a little bit more raw sienna to that. And have a look at that. Mm, that's not too bad. I think it might need a little bit of a red shade into it. I'm adding a little bit of Indian red or it could be burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt sienna that would do just to redden the shade a bit that's it you can see so it's going in very roughly but this is just placing the shapes the very first layer under her chin is very dark it's obviously well in shadow there so let's just pop that in I've used I did a raw black. umber there for that dark shadow. I've added a little bit of black to the raw umber and I'm just still just blocking in roughly. And this is quite dark. Bit of black into my burnt umber and raw umber. Good mixture and a bit of ultramarine. It's a lovely dark colour. I'm not going too dark to begin with because I can add detail as I go along with the next layer and the next layer on top of that, adding just a bit more detail every time. So I'm still mixing white and yellow ochre, lots of terps. A little bit of burnt sienna as well, and that's a warmer pinky shade. A bit of Indian red, I think. A bit more Indian red to make pinky shade for down there. To make sure that the bark isn't just straight down. The bark at a nice slant because that will make a more interesting composition. It's very, very dark there, so just a few extra bits of dark there. That is 
Burn Tumba and Ultramarine. Oh, I've missed a bit of the body there. Look, I can see it now. Right, it's dark under there. I'll go back and do that. The lovely thing about oil paints is that you can always keep going over. If it goes wrong, you let it dry and it, you can paint over the top. No problem. I'm going to use a little bit of black. A bit of yellow, a little bit of ochre, a little bit of ultramarine, that's okay, and some white because it's paler, it's further in the background, it's not too far away, but it is definitely further in the background. I've made it a bit bluer because if it's a bit bluer, it will stay in the background and not be not come forward. Colour about a bit and then add a few dark patches here and there. You don't have to do it exactly. Remember this is a photo reference, you're not copying it slavishly. This is going to be your own composition. I've used a mixture of Burnt Umber and Indian Red for this beautiful reddish I'm having trouble seeing the angle the angle that I'm at for the camera that's it, that'll do it's actually redder than that. It's a lot redder than that. But that can all be altered. Well, I've got this lovely red shade, red, ready brown. I'm just adding it here and there where I can see it. Where I can see the warmer shades. This nose is going to have to come out a bit more with the red. It will with the red. You can make green in so many different ways. The dark, really darkest green is with phthalo green and ultramarine. That makes a very, very dark green. So a bit of dark here and there. Down here it's very dark. I don't like that. I need more red in that. More red in that. That's a much better green there. And there, I've blocked in my first layer of paint. Now I'll let that dry overnight and begin the next layer when that's dry. <laughs>